Hey guys, so this is the latest project. Um, this is a, another N14. <laughs> uh, this is in a new Holland tractor. Um, 9682. Um, these are pretty good tractors actually. I quite like them, but they got, this is not a select plus. Uh, they call this the S, SCT or STC or I can't quite remember what it means step timing control or some damn thing like that but they basically use this oil control module there to that's how they controlled the timing of the injection because the 855s you know they just got uh, a straight shot of fuel and injected the same all the time the selects use the ECM to meter and time the fuel, and these used that and the oil uh, piston inside the valve cover there to control the timing. Anyway, so they're similar to an N14 Select Plus, but they're not the same. Anyway, this guy, he just wants an oil pump done and bottom end bearings. Um, I see it actually has had an oil pump done before. Um, you can tell that the color is different. I don't know if it's under his ownership or what, but it's, from what I can tell, it's that cam box is done and an oil pump. So given that, I don't know. I might talk to him and see if he still wants to do the pump. Um, but I'm sure he will. This guy takes pretty good care of his stuff. So underneath the tractor, uh, I'm thinking that this tank is going to be in the way. This is a hydraulic tank. And uh, there is clearance there, but I'm thinking it's going to be a little tight. Um, even if it's possible, it might be a pain in the ass. I'm um, thinking it's just going to be a whole lot easier to get that tank clear out of there. So that's probably what I'll do first is just cap those lines or maybe even drain the oil for the size of the tank it is. Drain it and save it in some buckets and cap these lines and then I'll just take it down with my transmission jack some way or another. But uh, yeah. I washed off the engine where it's going to be working, but I didn't really think to, to get all in here. I guess I should have known I was going to have to take the tank out. To tell you the truth, I washed the tank off, but I never really looked in the frame rail. Bolts should come out nice sitting in all that mud. I shouldn't be rusted or nothing. Hey guys, thought I'd just do a voice over here. Um, I'm I'm just working on this, trying to get it, uh, trying to get that tank out of there. You can see my hands there. I'm trying to describe how I'm gonna let this thing down, and you'll see in the video later that that's not really how it went. But anyways, I thought I'd do a voice over on this part because there's not really much happening. But uh, I haven't really posted many videos at all. Uh, one reason for that is it's been so busy. I've uh, just been kind of going going busy to get as much done as I can. And then the other reason for that is uh, I haven't really been able to edit any videos. Like I tried 
numerous times to get this video out and I just was not able to uh, edit like that that app that I was using when I first started to edit videos it was not uh, not working for me every time I'd get part part way edited it would just cut off and say or it would just freeze up and I'd lose all my progress so I'm trying a different app here and hopefully it works. I do like the voiceover part. On the other app I couldn't do a voiceover but on this one I can so that's kind of cool because uh, it's kind of nice sometimes to just explain what I'm doing instead of watching me and wondering what I am doing. So anyway I just thought I'd explain that let you guys know that I haven't thrown in the towel on YouTube. I've just been having a hard time getting it figured out and and it is actually pretty hard. People that do this stuff, uh, uh, well, it's, it's a learning curve for sure. show you what I'm I guess worried about up here so up here like I said I wanted to to you know lift the tank up like that slide it over let this side down you know move it over that way and then this side come down but this uh, this fill neck here like it kind of sticks up a ways um, like a guy's probably gonna have to grab it with a pipe wrench or something underneath and and take the fill neck right out because uh, you know if we if we tilt it that way it's gonna hit this frame and if we tilt it this way it's gonna hit the block uh, so that that sucker might just have to get unthreaded and jam a rag in there or something
Nothing to it. We just take the anchor. No big deal. You just take it out. Nothing to it. Just go ahead and remove the tank. You betcha. Now we got some room to work. And we also got some cleaning to do. Holy. Wow. That was a lot bigger chore than I thought it would be. Anyway, let's keep moving. Uh, trying to save my knees a little bit by using my roller seat, but I don't think it's gonna help. Okay, the only ones that are going to be difficult are the back ones because they go right above the front axle. So, Okay. Have I, have I missed a bolt on this side? It doesn't look like it. it. Just didn't seem to want to come. It's fucking kneeling pads, you know. They seem like they'd be handy. I guess they are better than crawling around on your hands and knees, but...
Okay, let me get a pry bar. Break this side loose. I guess I should have moved it. I didn't think every little fucking thing was going to be in my freaking way as bad as it is. take this line out of here. There's no point in fighting it. It's gonna fight on the way back in even if I get it now. the deal. pails there. Uh, if I had a, a waste oil system I could uh, I could suck it out and hopefully one day I will have that but today I don't. So yeah uh, me and my wife will get that cart emptied and uh, it can be used again for another job. Anyway the pan's off this thing now. I'm gonna let it drip a little bit. I'm gonna throw a piece of cardboard under there and then I got to switch gears here a little bit and work on a skid steer that a customer brought me. Uh, they're kind of wanting it so that they can clean corrals and make some room for, make some room around there to move the calves and stuff around because it's getting into calving season now or, well, actually it's pretty much full swing. So that's what guys around here are busy with these days. And uh, yeah, so I got to switch gears here and try to get the skid steer fixed. I'm not gonna video it, uh, but it's got fuel issues of some kind. Uh, it quit them the one time they had to prime the system and then it stayed running. So I'm thinking maybe there's 
shit in the tank or pickup tube is no good or something uh but we'll see anyway i will film this again once we pick up on it again okay so i'm gonna check crankshaft end play here uh I finished working on that skid steer, so I'm back on this. Uh, this probably isn't as important to do beforehand as it is afterwards, um, but I want to give the customer kind of a before and after because he's kind of trying, he's got three of these tractors all the same, uh, and he's trying to gauge how uh, critical this job is uh, to see what he wants to do with the other two. So I just want to give them, you know, see if there's any difference before or after. So anyway, here we go. So there were one, one, two, three, fourteen thou. So 14 thou there, so I'll write that down and we'll compare it to what it is when we're done. All right. So I'm gonna take a few down at a time in this way. I'll take number one and number six uh, rods and then probably go Two, two to, sorry, one, three, four, five, and seven mains, and then put all new bearings, and then we'll go all the rest, basically, after that. Figured that. Work the old college try. bottom in. This one I'll just take out by hand because it probably won't get the impact in there. Boy, these look really good. <sighs> Seems counterproductive at this point, but I think we'll keep on going. Uh, I mean, we're here. We got that hydraulic tank out. We're gonna we're gonna put new bearings in it. That's just 
for sure. So we ain't quitting now. But we probably could have not done it. But it's good peace of mind. And one might look worse than the rest. Never know. Trudeau blackface here. Fucking oil sprays everywhere. Oh yeah. See, and that's why you do it. This one, well, I'll show you all of them later when we're off when we got them on the bench. I will eat my previous words. Oh yeah, the washer. All right. Okay, well, that's awesome. This will be a really good thing to do. Cool. I shouldn't have said what I said earlier. I don't know why. I'm, I'm always encouraging people to look after their stuff and then I go ahead and start going off on how this is maybe not worth it, but this is good. Oh yeah. Uh, number seven. That one's going to be an asshole to get. Uh, I think I'll go get my three quarter inch bar and a snipe, I guess, and try to uh, take that guy off Dad. well folks my wife came out to help me empty that oil cart and uh, well one one side got lifted a little higher than the other and uh, we made a big oil spill so the cart is still not empty and uh, the floor dry budget is used up And baby does not approve. So we got number two, it's number six main caps holding this crank in place. And uh, that is sufficient. The only thing you gotta watch on the N14s is they use like a wide bearing and a narrow bearing, and a wide bearing and a narrow bearing. And you kinda keep one. over on. Gotta love it.
All right, guys, I uh, got the number seven cap up and the thrusts in. Uh, it went okay. They're just kind of a bit of a, they're not my favorite design, but uh, yeah, they're not bad. Anyway, I'm going to torque these up. Uh, I got a snap on. This is a 15 to 300 digital. Uh, I'll probably do the whole torque sequence with it. It's 90, 170, 255, and then back it off completely and basically do it again. So I'm gonna do that, but I might use the big three quarter just cause it'd be so much easier, uh, cause it's way longer. Uh, the only issue I have is the torque scale. You're not really supposed to use the lower end of your, of your scale, but at 255, we're, we're maybe all right, but I'll probably torque it up with this and then just maybe check it with the digital but uh, if this is good, I'll use that because that'll save my uh, save my back a little bit. Uh, but on the contrary, this might be a little too bulky to be swinging around in there. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. Oh, it's red, 94. So we're take her to 170 now. Okay, I'm going to grab that big bar and torque it to 255. Two 255 is not too bad, actually. I could probably do 255 pretty easily with the half inch, especially considering they're not going to be one after another. Yeah, I don't have a choice. This thing's too bulky. Okay, well that makes the decision easy. Whoops. Okay, 225. Now it says we gotta back it off. I always think about a regular torque wrench when I'm thinking about higher torques with that snap on. Um, you know, because most torque wrenches are the click types. They're not that long reach one. So they're, they're more like this breaker bar. But that long torque wrench, you actually get a fair bit of leverage on it. I really, really like that torque wrench. I always, I always buck the digitals big time. I was like, nah. I ain't getting no freaking torque wrench with batteries in it, not stupid, blah, blah, blah. And then my old click type quit me one time and I had to send it away for calibration. And the cost of that basically warranted buying a new one. So that's what I did. And I tried out a click type and man, I won't go back. They're so nice. 
And especially when you're doing all this newer shit with the torque to turn methods and stuff. Oh man, that's nice. I'm gonna buy a 3 8 one day too, but. I can't justify buying one until another one quits me. It's hard to shell out the 600 bucks or whatever the hell they are, probably $4,000 now. But uh, when my click type 3 8 quits me, I'm going to buy me a digital 3 8 Okay, Beauty. Okay. I think. No. Put that line there to make sure that I did it. I looked up the spec for the end play. And it is four thou to eighteen thou. So you'd think with how many I work on these, I'd remember stuff like this, but I don't. That's that's quite a spec. Like that's a that's a big variance. Um, so at fourteen thou, like we were earlier, we'll be right in. Uh, but it will be kind of fun to I don't know see if it made any difference in that in that aspect. But okay, that's number seven. So. The rest are easy compared to that, so I'm going to, uh, I guess, roll in this number five main, or I can do number six. Now let's do the mains. I got all the tools out for the mains, so we'll do that number six main now. Uh, I got to get the upper bearing out of it. Here it is. That's some pretty good scoring in there. Huh. Cool. All right, let's roll a new one in. Ouch. So one, another thing about these bearings, you can't get too carried away with the lube plate on them. Um, and you'll 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 know why if you do because you won't very easily or at all be able to pop the bearing into the block. Not this bearing, but the uh, the other one there. That's nice and clean. The lower bearing they sit inside the block as well they'll kind of snap into place but you won't be able to do that if you got too much lubricant plate Good. 
Okay. All right, I'll put the little lock washer in, and then the lower bed. Ow! Rick, I'm gonna hit the head on that step every damn time. Anymore. That's why I can't remember what the torque specs are. Freaking rain that was knocking my head on everything under here, and every other piece of equipment in the country. Jeez. I was actually this morning. I freaking cracked my head, or maybe it was the other day. Oh, and it just made me so mad. Oh, that just makes me mad anymore. And uh, and I decided I think I'm gonna get a bump cap and and just wear that regularly. Cause like I wear a ball cap anyways. So if I can wear a ball cap, that prevents me from hurting my freaking head every time I turn around. The other solution is take a freaking look at where you're going, I guess, but. That doesn't always work. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get one of them bump caps. <laughs> and then it won't matter, I can just crank my head off of anything. Be good to go. Show you guys what this looks like you'll probably see it way better on the other n14 that i'm rebuilding because that'll be out of frame so you'll be able to see it a hell of a lot easier but uh, basically you got that washer that sits in there and there's a little tabs cut into the bearings you know and then the, the other side of the bearing shell it'll just pop in there like you push it towards the crank and uh, you'll hear it kind of pop so that's how you do those I wrecked my shoulder in November playing hockey. And it never did heal right. I didn't do a damn thing to help it heal. But uh, I 
don't notice it. Too many day-to-day -to -day tasks, but when you got to lift something heavy or push or pull like that, I, I know it's a bend. Oh boy, it sure does make you a lot weaker. Like right there, geez, just got nothing. That's a good angle at it. There we go. <clears throat> Boy, it felt so beautiful outside and just heard the furnace kick on in the shop and the heater's set for five degrees Celsius. So and I got the I got the man door open. So, it must be less than five degrees outside still. Although in the sun, it's pretty pretty warm out. But it's funny because the, the Medicine Hat guys, they're gonna be going seeding here first of, first of May probably. And down here, I don't even know if you're gonna be able to drive in the fields at the first of May. Okay. Here's 90 again. So then basically, do that again and again and again and again, and that'll take you to the end of it. Well guys, the bottom end is fully done. Uh, I didn't film the rest of it because, well, it's just basically a whole lot more of the same that I was already doing. Definitely glad to be done it. <laughs> uh, that's one of them jobs that, you know, that's not an easy job. That is not an easy job. That is extremely hard on the knees. Uh, man, if I do that a lot more. I don't think my knees will make it past 50. But, uh, you know, I was using those knee pads for the majority of it until, until the straps started to hurt the backs of my knees. And then I went to that uh, kneeling pad and I mean, oh yeah, that'll help big time, but you're, you're still on your knees a lot. Uh, so here's the old scrap metal pile. Uh, all the bearings, they looked all right. General wear. I was actually surprised that the the journals ended up looking better than the mains. So that was a little bit odd. 
Um, and then, yeah, like I said, with the scoring on the journals, I'm glad that we did it. And uh, I, I emery clothed a couple of journals, or mains, sorry, uh, just to clean them up a little bit better. But all in all, uh, it's pretty good. So it's three o'clock here, but it's a Saturday and I'm trying to get this project wrapped up which I'm filming as well. It's nothing nothing too exciting. It's just me mounting a vise, uh, but I'm doing it a little differently and I don't know, it's kind of cool. Anyway, uh, probably Monday, I guess, we'll go ahead and change out this oil pump. Um, the only thing I don't think I got is uh, these gaskets here. So I might be able to make some or just go ahead and get some coming. Uh, but whatever the case might be, we'll get her. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's the bottom end. So I'm really, really happy that's done. <laughs> I don't even want to put the oil pan back on this damn thing. My freaking knees hurt so bad right now. So, but you know, not all jobs can be winners. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just work, right? Just good old good old fashioned work. Uh, it's nothing fancy. It's nothing glamorous. Uh, it's just straight up work, manual labor that is. So anyway, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I guess up until now, I'll probably film doing the pump, but that won't be nothing too special. Uh, I barred it over bars. Good. I got crank end play still haven't measured it, but, uh, we'll measure it at the end, but Everything looks good, so. All right, so I got the pan back on, so it's a little harder to check this now, but no big deal. So there you can see, we are just, we're at nine thou. So we went from 14 to nine, um, both well within spec, uh, but definitely one tighter than the other. So that's kind of fun, I guess. Fun to compare that difference. So there you go. Come out here and so this thing's running real good. Uh, it sounds nice. Good oil pressure. Uh, got the oil pressure reading right off the block there. So, thing I noticed is while it's running, the alternator's not charging. Um, as well as the oil pressure in the gate in the cab is like 15 psi higher than this one. And I think you can tell when it's shut off, it's like sitting at 15 or 20 pounds so it's it's just 15 20 pounds higher all across the board so we're gonna have to change that oil pressure sensor or uh, i would like to anyway and the alternator yeah it's not charging i tried to excite it manually just holding the hot wire to the uh oh it's labeled one on this one but i think it's supposed to be l or something uh i'm not sure but Anyway, tried to excite it manually and that did not help. So uh, we'll go ahead and change that. But the oil pump, uh, pretty easy, pretty straightforward pump. Uh, the shaft is different from the egg pumps versus the the, tra the truck pumps. But uh, so basically I just pulled it apart and put the egg shaft from the old one into the new pump. And the reason for that is because the proper pump for the egg side is like $3,000 more than this. This is an aftermarket pump. Someone's gonna bitch about that and say it's a piece of shit, but uh, near as I can tell, ain't no different. So this is the old pump shaft here. Okay, so on the egg one, this gear is probably almost twice as wide and it has a 
the shaft coming off the front here that engages with the pilot and the front timing cover. And the reason for that is because on the end of here, on that spline coupling, they hang a, another two hydraulic pumps on the back side. So I think just to maybe counteract the weight, they put that stub on there. I'm not too sure. That's my theory. Uh, the pump, I was actually surprised. It, it had been changed once, but it didn't look that good. Um, it's got some pitting in the gear teeth, which is not real major yet. There's a pretty bad one. Um, so it's not terrible yet, but I mean, that's just step one of a failure waiting to happen. So I was really glad that I took it apart and checked it out because it gives me an idea too of the lifespan of some of these components. So uh, yeah, overall, I think this guy uh, made a pretty good call getting this work done. And uh, yeah, he should have one less thing to worry about during seeding season now. So anyway, uh, sorry I didn't film the oil pump. Uh, it really wasn't nothing too exciting. And uh, yeah, I, I just quite honestly, I just kind of got tired of filming. Uh, it's kind of hard work. Not hard work but it's it's extra time and just a little bit of extra dicking around while you're doing the job and honestly I've been so freaking busy that I just I gotta I gotta really go like I don't have the extra time to spend filming the videos but uh, I hope it gives you a little bit of a glimpse into what what goes on and uh, yeah I just I don't know I don't even know if anybody likes watching these videos, but, um, you know, it might be entertainment for somebody. Uh, 